What up everyone, it's Kid and I'm back with a brand new video. So today itself, as you can both tell by the title, what the hell did I just say? As you can tell by the title, we are talking about The Mandalorian. It's been a couple weeks since The Mandalorian Season 2 finale has aired and I haven't really talked about the show itself. This isn't a review of the whole series. To be honest, Season 2 was fairly uh, mediocre because uh, it just... It just didn't satisfy me as a viewer and it felt like there were too many moments where it's like here's some fan service or here's something that just doesn't seem well written and I've seen a lot of jokes about oh it's Dave Filoni and John Favreau just going at it and just making Star Wars content and um, you know it's great sure they have a lot of fan service but you also gotta have a balance the reason why people like one of the reasons why the sequel trilogy is you know not as well loved is because it's poorly written here it's the same thing with The Mandalorian and I'm going to show that with uh, a few examples that I want to discuss. The main example I want to talk about is with the episode where we get Boba Fett back in action. You know, there are a lot of questions to be raised. Why didn't Boba Fett go for his armor when the Marshal had it itself? There was no reason or nothing else stopping him. Why did he wait until The Mandalorian came, took it off Tatooine and then he went for it when there... It just doesn't seem to make all that much sense. Maybe, you know, I can buy if it's because the Mandalorian was one of the reasons why his Fennec, I think the his partner, uh, you know, was injured and stuff like that. But at the same time, it just doesn't make much sense. But beyond that, that episode itself, I believe it's episode 6, because in episode 7 we have them get, uh, you know, the bold guy Bill Burr, and then episode 8, the finale. Episode 6 itself, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and I thought Robert Rodriguez would have a really cool episode because he's, you know, if his movies, his movies aren't the best, but they sure are unique, and that's one of the great things. But his episode was pretty bad. Not only is the Mandalorian trying to get through that force field thing that's surrounding um, Grogu so many times, and it just doesn't make sense to me. He takes off his jetpack, and you know why he's taking it off. I don't know why. The character itself is taking it off because it just doesn't make sense and it's really poorly done. I get why they're doing it for the story so he doesn't chase after Grogu, but it was just really poorly executed. In Star Wars, you can excuse a lot of things by just saying it's the Force or midichlorians or just giving a reason for it related to the Force and the Jedi and everything. But in this episode itself, we have them come to the planet and they find the temple or the stone in which he has to rest upon so easily and in the past you know if he, he's with the frog lady he gets to the right ship placement place docking place and it's like okay yeah cool because i don't know how many places there are to dock and i'm sure she told him he's at this port in tatooine we find out there are three um, main settlements i'm sure they're really big settlements but there are three main ones so it makes sense why people frequently go to you know most Eisley so often and it's you know some similar things when you go to the planet in episode 7 where uh, Bill Burr it's like okay you know that there's the Imperial factory there that's why you're going in towards that direction but with this the Mandalorian doesn't know about the Jedi and Grogu doesn't speak to the Mandalorian so how do they know where the temple is are they spending quite a while looking for it and the episodes itself are really short and that's a big problem I have with the Mandalorian and this was a perfect one where they could easily, you know, maybe make it 20-30 minutes still if you really want to keep it short, you know, they're spending, putting way too much money into these episodes for them to be like 30 minutes. But then if you want to keep it that way, you can still have two episodes doing that. All you have to do is have them land on the planet, search for the temple. Once you get to that temple, you have them do trials where Grogu has to use the Force. In this, he's straining himself using the Force, he's getting tired. Mandalorian tries using, you know, physical ways to unlock doors and get through passageways. And, you know, that takes up 20 minutes. And once you get to that point, you have him sit on the sit on the stone, you have Boba, Sh Boba Fett's ship arrive, and, you know, you start end on the fact that there's a gun on Grogu. Bam, you have a 30 minute episode, there you go. And then you have another episode coming, and that's where you have more or less what happened in this one episode. We have Grogu meditating, the Mandalorian and Boba Fett have that little face off, and then more stormtroopers come and they try to take Grogu. There's a little more of a you know struggle against that. Maybe you don't have um, the Mandalorian take off his jetpack, and that way you can establish how much of a threat these drones are. Because one of the other problems is that in the finale, you know, they build up the finale with oh we have these mechanical drones, you know, what's better then a stormtrooper, you take out the human part of it. But then the problem is, we know that in the First Order, like 20, 30 years later, they go back to humans. So obviously the drones, the robots, the droids aren't all that great. So you have to show them in action before we can feel them as a threat. They did that in Episode 8 when they had the Mandalorian fight one. 
and it was like, oh, okay, look how struck, how much he's struggling against them. And then Luke take, took on the rest, which wasn't much of a surprise, Luke being the Jedi. I really was hoping it wasn't Luke because now we know, more or less know what happens to Grogu. He either gets killed at the temple or he's off on another mission because we know in the comics with Ben Solo that he's not there while Ben Solo is training. And obviously they can easily just retcon it. But beyond that itself, going back to the episode, you have the Mandalorian struggle, try to fly back up there and try to at least get Grogu back. That's where he fights one of them and we pre-established before the finale episode how much of a you know struggle it is to fight these uh, drones, these robots. These dark troopers, I don't know what they're called, but you know, that's what I'll call them, refer to them from here on out, the dark troopers. So that way it establishes it for the finale, and you know, we get two episodes out of this. You have, you know, less gimmicky action, because at one point, I Fennec, I'm gonna refer to um, Boba Fett's, you know, a seal, a, you know, team member as Fennec, because I think that's her name. She's running across the boulders, running that way, and then they're shooting at her that way, but then they're missing her, and I guess some troopers have terrible aim at one point, they're missing her right in front and then the Mandalorian comes, he comes and he block defends her and now they suddenly hit their target because he has Beskar armor. It's a big problem with season two. With Beskar armor, he feels like he's invincible. When they're in uh, episode three or was where we get introduced to Bo-Katan, he feels so invincible. He literally runs down a hall with grenades essentially in his arms and they keep on shooting his shoulders, his armor. Not one of them managed to shoot one of the grenades. So actually I've been talking for like the past 15 minutes and then I turn to my camera, I finish off the episode, I go to my camera and then it turns out that uh, the recording stopped halfway because we ran out of space. So here I am trying to go back and trying to recall everything that I said. You know, I heard the rumor that Robert Rodriguez was, uh, you know, very, you know, disappointed by the script itself. So we had to fill the episode up with a lot of action. Whether that's true or not, I don't know because he is producing the Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett series. So obviously he's still on good terms with Lucasfilm. Overall, you know, I'm really excited for the Book of Boba Fett. It'll be cool. I'm not a huge Boba Fett fan because obviously, you know, I never thought of him as... You know, such a cool bad guy. I always thought Django Fett was better. Uh, Quinlan Voss, I hoped he was the Jedi because I know he, in the comics, he survives Order 66. I love him as a character. He's in my fan film script I want to make of him. Uh, and then I think it would also take away from the fact that Luke, we know what happens with Luke in the comics. We've seen the Jedi that are training with Ben Solo and Luke. Uh, we know who the Knights of Ren are now. We know they're not, they're not past Jedi. So it's no way that Groku could end up being a Knights of Ren, which would be very weird to see. But... You basically know how everything's going. He either gets on another mission and returns to the Mandalorian, but either way, he's going to be like 80 years old, not even, when the time of the Force Awakening comes around. And the Ben Solo thing happens several years, at least before the Force Awakens. So, you know, Grogu wouldn't be with Luke Skywalker for all that long. But at the same time, you know, it's up in the air. The Mandalorian is already changing so much. We have those things of Snoke that are there, you know, you have um, obviously what's happening with the Mandalorian race going on. Um, Moff Gideon having the dark saber. It's, uh, I'm gonna be everywhere because I'm trying to remember what I said when I last recorded. Um, in the ending itself finale, you have the Mandalorian take off his helmet to show Grogu. But in this episode before that, we just saw his helmet off to access the Imperial files, which doesn't make sense because not, how can just anyone's face access the files? It should be limited to people who have a face registered under the Imperial army. And we know the Mandalorian doesn't. At the same time, that episode did a good thing about taking away the Mandalorian's armor because you know, he's pretty much invincible with that. When he's running down a hallway with grenades in the Bryce Dallas Howard's episode, which was much better this time compared to her episode in season one, which was really bad. I really didn't buy the relationship at all in him taking off the helmet. But in this one, he's running down a hallway with grenades, but he keeps on getting shot in the armor. Boba Fett becomes the driver for the rest of the season. Um, you have that moment where the ladies come out and they take over the whole ship in uh, the finale. And it wasn't as cringe as the 18 moment in Avengers Endgame. But at the same time, it's just uh, what happened to that male Mandalorian that was with Bo-Katan and everything. Do we assume he died doing one of the missions? You know, pretty pathetic of a Mandalorian to die to random pirates or something if that is the case. Or Imperials, considering how well they did against the Imperial Army, uh, Imperial soldiers in the episode that we did see him in. So all those questions and more, we might get the answer to, or we might not, who knows really. Um, I've talked a bit about why the Boba Fett Return episode is a great example of that, splitting into two episodes, having the first episode, or maybe just merging them together, have a really long episode by having them spending time finding, going through trials to find the place, the stone to sit at, maybe the Mandalorian helping out when Grogu gets tired and everything. You know, him going, the 
writing is just really bad in the series as a whole. A great example, I'm always going to go to Robot Head. I like said his name so many times in the last recording. Go check out Robot's he Robot Head's videos on The Mandalorian because he's really giving good points in such an entertaining way. And it's so true because in the last season, uh, in the finale, Moff Gideon was really good. He was came out of nowhere, such an intimidating villain, you know, had a fight with the Mandalorian, it was really cool. And then he comes out, even though he's defeated, he has a dark saber and it's still pretty intimidating. But then in this season, all he does is just stand around in a ship, look menacing, you know, he gets the dark troopers to do his bidding. And then beyond that, he has a fight with Din Djarin, you know, using the lightsaber. But then it just, uh, I'm just like, it was pretty bad as a fight. Like, I don't get how the Mandalorian is so good for Spear. How talented is the Mandalorian? Can he do anything? Because he seems pretty invincible. We haven't seen him use a physical weapon like a staff or a spear before in a fight. Uh, but then here he held his own against a guy with a Darksaber. And we, obviously we saw the fight coming. I knew it was coming the moment he got the spear. But, you know, it just normally he uses a gun and he even lost against the Mudhorn. He needed Grogu's help there. But then here he holds his own against Moff Gideon, which I assume has had the Darksaber for a long, long time. And I assume he would have trained well with it. You know, the Luke Skywalker scene, it looked really cool, but the CGI was terrible. You have like 11 to like 15 million dollars per episode. All you have to do is cast Sebastian Stan. You know, get someone who looks like a young Luke Skywalker, so that way you can use it again in the future. Everyone loves to get Sebastian Stan as a young Luke Skywalker. You know the CGI won't look good, don't do it, okay? You know, I don't care how many people out there watch it and cry and get emotional seeing Luke Skywalker the way he was, you know, helping someone out of kindness. I've seen a lot of people say that because it's different to how he is in The Last Jedi. But the thing about it is, do it well. If you want to make a series like The Mandalorian and you just want to have a guy going on missions, you know, go do that. Don't try to add in this story going through the whole thing. Don't try to build it up like it's a bigger thing. Don't add so many small subplots and make this such a messy and overall just such a poorly written show. Because, you know, as much as I love Star Wars and I love The Mandalorian, I'm also very disappointed by it. And season two, you know, season one was bad because it had a lot of fillers and I don't know if this came in the last recording, but I talked about this. My friend, I told him, oh, it has too many fillers The Mandalorian compared to the amount of episodes it has. It's not a good balance. And then he brought up Naruto and you had Naruto has a lot of fillers, but then it also has a lot of episodes which aren't filler. And even some of the filler episodes are pretty good episodes. And sure, in The Mandalorian, some of the filler episodes aren't that bad. But at the same time, there are only eight episodes per season. And I don't think we're going to get to you know, even close to triple digits of The Mandalorian unless they start to really bulk up the number of episodes per season. Because, you know, now that Grogu's gone, you know, a lot of the viewers may stop watching it. The average viewer might not watch uh, The Mandalorian anymore because the main reason why the average person watched it, which was the child, Baby Yoda, is now no longer in the series at all. I don't know, hopefully they don't keep up the same formula that they've been using because it's gonna get really annoying having him go on another mission, another mission. I don't care if it's like a video game because, you know, I can't play as that character, you know? I don't get those upgrades and use them in my, you know, game or whatever. I'm not playing as that character. You can't make a movie and say, oh, it's like a video game. But then, is it a good as a movie? You can't make a TV show and say it's like a video game going mission, 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 mission. But is it good as a TV series? First and foremost, make it good as a TV series and then you can add this little aspect. Oh, it's like a video game a little. That's how you do it. You know, I've explained how to write the show, how to write, you know, you know, an episode itself. I'm just checking the recording real quick. It's still going. You know, this is how you do it. Hope you agree with me. I hope you go check out Robot Head's videos because he'll probably do a better job at explaining all this than I do because I don't hate The Mandalorian. Don't get that from me. I'm just, this video itself is more so for my criticisms of it than me giving a review as a whole because I thought season two was good. It was entertaining, it had its disappointing moments and I just want to be out there and just make sure that it's out there because I criticize the sequel trilogy, I criticize Rogue One Solo, I criticize all the Star Wars movies equally and I'm going to criticize The Mandalorian just as I would one of these movies just because Kathleen Kennedy or J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson aren't directly behind this series as a whole and sure Dave Filoni's involved, he was also involved in Resistance and look, that was not a great show. You know, Rebels had its flaws, the Clone Wars started off a little air and then it really picked up after season two. Like, that's what my friend brought up, he's like, the Clone Wars, you know, it's pretty much all filler. It's an anthology series, the Clone Wars is completely different to The Mandalorian and I think it's 100% better than The Mandalorian, okay? It doesn't matter what people say about Jar Jar or anything. 
he has some really good episodes in that show itself. And overall, obviously, The Mandalorian isn't done yet, and it's hard to compare it with everything else. But at the same time, I equally criticized The Last Jedi when it came out and there was no Rise of Skywalker. I will criticize The Mandalorian where I see fit from a series expected perspective, okay? As a quality of TV show made, that's how I'm looking at it, okay? Obviously as a Star Wars fan as well, and I really do enjoy it. So let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree with me. Do you think The Mandalorian is a good series or do you think it's, you know, mediocre or bad? Where do you think it's gonna go? Make sure you hit that like button or dislike the video if you don't agree with what I said. But I'd like to hear your opinion because that's what I do this for, you know? I wanna create discussion. So let me know in the comment section down below. Please share this video if you get a chance and make sure you check out Robot Hits videos as well. So until next time, I'll see you guys.